Lloyd Rees and Brett first met. Oh, I'm not sure exactly what year, but Brett grew up in Longerville. He went to boarding school in Bathurst, so he was acquainted with um, the same kind of landscapes that Lloyd Rees knew about in Bathurst. And he decided while he was at boarding school in Bathurst to be an artist, so he started connecting with all the things. Brett's father, Clem Whiteley, had done some, some reproduction, very high quality reproductions for Dobell, and they knew um, Bill Pigeon and um, that family in Northwood, and they, uh, you know, th then that connected with Lloyd Reese and Brett, and then we all connect. Then, and then we all started to connect at, J at John Santry Sketch Club. The first date I went on with Brett, which wasn't really supposed to be an official date, because I was introduced to Brett by a friend of his who I was going out with at the time. I think I'd had about two outings with him, and he said, well, you know, and I was going to art school. I was going to the what was called East Sydney Tech, now the National Art School. Um, and he said, oh, you'd, you'd love to meet Brett Whiteley because he's interested in painting. You know, Brett was working at Lintas at the time, but he took me around to Longerville to the house to meet Brett, and then Brett asked me to go to the sketch club. That was our first date, so I went to the sketch club. And we, that, that was the end of the other guy, and Brett and I started to be together. That was in 1957. Um, and we started going out, and so that was the first time that I really had been involved. I knew his work from going to the New South Wales Art Gallery, and Brett mostly knew about it, but he always admired him. And when he started um, working abstractly, um, he started really drawing on Lloyd Rees's drawings and paintings, more than the drawings probably, of the road to bury and things like that, and pulling out of the bed, and that a big connection, which he didn't really say until much later to Lloyd about this, the, the way he viewed the kind of sensual or sexual side in of Lloyd's drawings, the big bosomy hills and things. I think it was quite a startling concept for for Lloyd Rees. I I just kind of was amazed by the man with that wonderful. Roman patrician head and the white hair and the kind of very gentlemanly um, manner he had. He never drew the nude, which was fascinating to me. And when you look at see his work, you see he never drew really drew the figure. You know, so it wasn't surprising that Brett would see it, but he seemed to have been the first one to see it. You know, the sensuality in Lloyd, and they actually talked about it with Lloyd very openly. You know. Um, there's a photograph of, uh, there's a beautiful photograph of, of um, f taken out at the uh, S.H. Irvin exhibition, Lloyd Rees' S.H. Irvin exhibition, the last one he had there before he died, I think. And um, we, you know, tended with great trepidation and huge amount of respect, but Brett marched up to Lloyd and kissed him on the head, and it's a very, very tender, very moving photograph. And it, it really is essentially the, the feeling that Brett had for Lloyd Rees, which was huge amount of respect, love, really genuine love for the man. Um, they, didn't, they didn't live in each other's pockets by any means. There was a huge generation gap, but Brett had a very, very close sense of bonding with Lloyd Rees from the early days in his life and bef before we left here. He picked up on it again when we came back to Australia in 1965 and uh, was then began communicating with Lloyd Rees in a way that was quite... But when we came back here in 1969-70 and came to live in this house, we used to go to McMahon's Point um, on a regular basis, actually, and just stare at the terrace houses, which were still... that Lloyd had painted that beautiful painting of McMahon's Point with the old terrace houses and wonderful old Victorian terraces, just to look at them, you know? He had that... He had a reverence for Lloyd, which was remarkable. The only, only other painter I can think living that he had that kind of feeling for was Francis Bacon. And they're so different, both as people and as um, um, painters, that it's, it's remarkable. And of course, Brett made that, that tribute to Lloyd Rees, which Lou knew about when he did the, the Rees Whiteley show at Heidi um, in Melbourne, um, the Road to Berry tribute. So for him, Lloyd Rees was a very, very important connection. From, for me, it was like this wonderful um, 
grandfatherly figure. I had the same feeling about him as I did, the reverence and, and attraction and, you know, just reverence, really reverence. And it had a lot to do with, with the look of Lloyd Rees, which was magnificent. It was magnificent in Australia, very un-Australian in a way. It was the Roman senator or the patrician uh, parliamentarian or something, or the great, you know, kind of Leonardo da Vinci type artists, you know, kind of. But first of all, in The Good Weekend, of which I found a copy the other day, there's a, first of all, a very good cover story on Lloyd Rees. Then secondly, there's a, there's a story about the relationship between Brett Whiteley and Lloyd Rees, which was very moving in the sense of the letters that they wrote to each other. Is, is a letter written by Lloyd to Brett that, mentioning that, he'd like, he, that he would, wanted to pass the baton to this young prince, basically. So it was like a king writing to a, a young prince, heading on the baton, obviously about creativity, nothing else, but, you know, he thought that Brett was a... It's interesting, because a lot of people have ignored Lloyd Rees in contemporary, in the contemporary then, they found him rather dull. Um, Brett never saw that. They found him rather Victorian and dull and not, you know, all that innovative, which I think just goes to show they don't look properly. I really do think that. He's been in a way neglected and on the other hand not. The late pictures are, are, are so amazing, the, the ones where he was losing his sight. But they are, they are amazing in the sense that he was losing his sight and just painting light and it was a huge jump forward for him. I think they're quite different in feel to what we've got now, because we've got, you know, I mean, what I've got now in Lavender Bay, which includes Luna Park and the bridge. I, I don't remember the Lloyd ever painted the bridge, did he? I don't think so. Or drew it. Um, his are a much earlier version of Sydney Harbour, but they are, and he paints the bay, the bays like Lavender Bay, lovingly, you know, they're, they're enclosed kind of things. They're not the grand scale, big, um, well, Lloyd Rees only used easel-sized pictures too, which is something that changed, you know, and he made easel-sized pictures for, for, for hanging on walls in, in houses that didn't have gin ginormous walls. Nobody started to paint really, again, paint the size of, uh, you know, the big Whiteleys or big abstractionists until the Americans let loose with hard-edge abstraction. But Lloyd, earlier pictures of the harbour and then later on the opera house and things are stunning in their own way, but um, that enclosed thing is, is, is much more... Brett's got a lot of empty space in his pictures. You know what I mean? And with the, with the enclosed thing on the edges. So Lloyd Reese's, because of the size of them, probably more than anything, are tightly contained inside the, the canvas and the edges in a way that Brett doesn't. But it doesn't mean they're not still, you know, the Harbour pictures haven't got that exactly that, that um, central thing that Brett talked about with the hills in the Baptist pictures and the Road to Berry pictures and the Jeringong pictures and all of those things because they were landscapes rather than harbourscapes, you know. They are quite different, actually, both in Whiteley and in Lloyd Reef. You know, the inner view of, this, of the land and the harbour, because the empty kind of, the, you know, the fact that there's big spaces like the water, you know, the harbour water is enclosed and limited by what's on its edges, but still it's big open spaces. 